Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii, magnitude 3.6 deep earthquake. In the upper mantle area, you can see here that the mantle plume basically starts around 30 miles down. So when we're about 40 miles deep, as you can see from here, that's about 70 kilometers. Now, today's earthquakes we'll see together, but this one was at 3.6 magnitude at 19.9, let's say 20 miles depth uh, above the uh, mantle plume. This is the area where most of the uh, earthquakes do take place, but most of them are shallow. Now, zero level is sea level. When you have a minus 0 0.1, for example, we had a magnitude 2 of a minus 0 0.1, that means that it's above sea level, so it could be towards, for example, the crater, which uh, is at a height. And we've had a number of earthquakes today, and the biggest from what we see here is a 3.6. And we don't have any reports of anybody feeling it, but we've had a tremendous amount of activity today. Mauna Loa, as we know, is the nearby volcano, and that has been color-coded yellow on August 16. We know that Mauna Loa and Kilauea and the Loihi Seamount to the south of the island all share the same magma chamber. It's the same magma chamber and it has three uh, arms, three plumes, one in Mauna Loa, one in Kilauea, one at the Loihi Seamount. So usually when you have Mauna Loa erupting, you don't have Kilauea erupting. Or when Kilauea is erupting, you don't have Mauna Loa erupting. God forbid if they both erupt together, my goodness. Now Mauna Loa is the biggest active volcano on the earth. Let's take a look at them together, what activity they've had and what the deformation is today. Okay, here we are. This is the one that's 3.6. You can see where the star is. It's down here somewhere. This is the overall activity, 428 well, okay, that's in the, in the screen. 428 quakes in a 28-day period. This is the one that we see is about 20 kilometers depth. Amazing amount of activity in this area. Okay, towards the Loihi Seamount. And now it could be that this is preparing for something. There we go, 163 in that area alone. And uh, the yellow is uh, the past week, that's the past month, and this is the past day. And the deformation, the past two days, tilt at Kilauea Summit, past two days, The uh, Kilauea Summit and East Rift Zone, past week. And this is the past month. We see that it's really, really inflating. Blue line shows the radial tilt at the station on the western rim of Kilauea's caldera. The green line is the radial tilt at Pu'o, north of Pu'o Cone. These are recorded by continuously operating electronic tilt meters. Positive changes often indicate inflation of the magma storage areas beneath the caldera or Pu'o'o, but may also result from heavy rainfall or occasionally instrumental malfunction. While they didn't have an instrumental mal malfunction, if they would have had it for the past month, I'm sure they would have taken care of it. They wouldn't have left it like that. Plus, they didn't have any heavy rainfall this summer, so it has to be the magma storage magma molten rock beneath the surface of the earth and this is from october of last year and the build up of the uh well build up it's it's the increase of the uh 
the uh, level because of the increase of the magma underneath the storage of the magma. And this is, of course, from 2014, five-year period. We see that it was building up, uh, I would say, that at a lesser velocity than this line. This line is steeper than this line was. And uh, that's when the eruption took place spring of last year. And the deflation dropped after, of course, the eruption, and you could see it building up again. Uh, this is the Puo'o cone, October of last year. I don't know what happened there. That was obviously a malfunction. But then it picked up again where it left off. And you can see the tremendous amount of increase of the level of the uh, surface. GPS stations, change in distance between the two global positioning systems located on opposite sides of uh, Kilauea's caldera. The rapid increase in distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir. Magma reservoir, the location beneath the vent of a volcano where the molten rock magma is stored prior to the eruption, also known as magma storage zone or magma reservoir. So the increase is interpreted as inflation of the magma reservoir and Puo change in distance between the two stations. Rapid increase in distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir or the Puo magma storage chamber. So that's it. GPS stations, PUOC weathered the 2018 eruption, but recent data suggests it is slowly sliding into the Puo crater. You can see its southward progress into the crater in the above plot. This motion is not directly related to magmatic activity at Puo'o, but is interpreted to be sliding of the unstable edge of Puo'o cone. This GPS station is very close to the edge of the crater, so it's not hugely surprising to see this happening after big changes at Puo'o in the summer of 2018. That is it. Multimedia. Okay, we know that we've had September 1st. Continue slow rise of water level at the bottom of the Halamamau crater. This is not something usual. There are, however, legends from two or three hundred years ago and songs of the Hawaiian people that uh, at one time water had accumulated at the crater of Kilauea and later uh, after that there was an eruption which was a very bad and explosive eruption and we, and we have been told by the geologists that yes Kilauea is an explosive volcano and yes it will erupt again but they don't know when all right so this is the uh, image captured August 31st close-up of the fumaroles on the north side the fumaroles are vents from which steam and volcanic gases issue, as we know. The north side of Helimamau crater shows broader view of the crater with the water pond at the bottom and close-up of steaming and ripples on the water surface. This is by M. Michael Patrick of USGS. And more images of the lower reef, east rift zone, the flow field from the flyover. The aerial view looking south shows Cape Kumukali Lighthouse and Kapoho area. The 2018 lava flows is the dark region, the dark regions here as you can see, here as well. Kapoho crater is in the upper right corner, USGS photo by D. Becker. Right is close-up of the scalloped shoreline of 2018 lava in the Kapoho Bay area. The wider view of Kapoho area showing Highway 132 road construction in the middle. And uh, four corners area, quarry in red oxidized cinder of the 1960 eruption, the eruption cone. The original village of Kapoho destroyed by the 1960 eruption. 
was in the area between the 1960 Cone and Capoho Crater. Fuming at the top of the photo is from the wide area of 2018 lava that buried the Capoho Farm Lots subdivision. Capoho Beach Lots and Vacation Land Hawaii Dub subdivision also buried by the 2018 lava. This is a, an even better picture as you can see. View of the coastline near Pohoiki showing May 2018 lava flows which were the first flows of the 2018 Lower East Worst Zone eruption to reach the ocean. Highway 137 has been recut through these flows to provide access to, po to uh, Pohoiki. All right, more of them here. And the vertical view into Halimamau with the water pond. Here it is all the way down there. Here it is, shadowed. At the bottom, still in the shadow of early morning light. And a closer view of the pond, of the water pond at the bottom of Helimamau. This is a picture imaged by Decker, D. De De Becker on uh, August 29th. And looking across, across the eastern part of Kilauea caldera, lower portion of the caldera floor, dropping during 2018 collapse events. Prior to 2018, this drop-down portion had been level, with the caldera floor visible at left. Kilauea Iki can be seen in the background, upper left, as you can see. So this all went down, it would have been otherwise level. And here we have a better look of it, the new fault scarp, the scarp is the, the part here. The fallen part, as you can see, during the 2018 caldera floor collapse. This scarp is about 500 feet. 500 feet. It's pretty big. Mauna Loa, visible in the far distance. That's it right there. Okay. And here we have the water again, August 30th. Clear weather provided good views of the water pond Halimama, which continues to slowly rise. Variation in color on the surface evident. Close up of the eastern end of the pond provides a better view of the varying surface color. Ripples also obvious. And the fumaroles at Halimama crater. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.